I think the offering that the, the BBC had put on the table is a very exciting one. Not just to host you know, Focus on Africa from where it's been, but to host it from Nairobi. Like literally bring it straight to where the stories we'll be talking about really affect the people the most. During the launch, my wife, I told people that uh, it's his birthday and they sang uh, to me. So, I mean, it just made it even more special. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. So, it wasn't planned, but I think it came out great. If my life were a song, I would say God is in control. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. I am uh, grateful for this opportunity to talk to you guys. I'm the uh, senior lead presenter at uh, BBC's Focus on Africa. We are coming, uh, the show will be coming from Nairobi and uh, grateful to be part of the team and to have that opportunity uh, to have this happen. I have been in the media for the last 14 years, I've worked uh, at another media outlet, Citizen TV, before joining the BBC. Uh, I love what I do. I am uh, excited about uh, working in a job that has uh, great ability to change people's lives, to tell new and different stories, to speak to different audiences. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, look forward to being a part of uh, the change that journalism can bring across the African continent. I enjoy going to the gym. Sometimes I enjoy more of the end after a crazy session than the beginning, but uh, that definitely gets me in the right place, headspace and everything else. I do enjoy watching movies. And it's funny sometimes because a journalist will watch a movie and think, hmm, this would make a nice story. Or, hmm, that's a shot that I would have used differently. So sometimes I forget that I should relax. But I do enjoy a good movie, a good series. Uh, you know, watch with my wife. We, you know, we laugh. We just have a good time. I enjoy traveling and touring and like hiking, like outdoor activities. You travel, you learn. When it comes to anchoring, I would say the actual reading of the news is 10 to 20% of the real workload of an anchor who wants to be good at their job or who wants to really deliver for the audiences. Uh, an anchor who wants to deliver for the audiences, one, must be in every meeting that pertains to their show, must contribute ideas, should help to get perspectives. If they have access to reports, if they know newsmakers, in that meeting is where that anchor needs to be plugged in, participate, share ideas, share contacts, you name it. That anchor also needs to follow up with the reporters and make sure they are, they are getting the best angle, angles of the stories that they are doing. That anchor should also attend rehearsals, uh, hold meetings with guests prior to having them on air, um, and just ensure that all of that is working. Are the graphic sequences as well? Um, that anchor should also actively ask themselves, how are we going to speak to our digital audiences with this broadcast? Are there teasers? Are there, you know, previews? Is there stuff that should be happening as the bulletin is going on. That could literally consume 70% of your work day because when you look at meetings that could go an hour on and you sometimes have two to three meetings back to back, that same anchor should also ask themselves, what are we doing tomorrow? We've had a great show today. What's, what's happening tomorrow as well? Uh, and also be able to really pick up feedback because feedback is so important uh, to being able to better improve yourself. The days when uh, I was told that, you know, back in the 1990s, anchors would read the news and wait for a letter to be sent by mail, Slow, snail, snail mail, <laughs> post office. I don't know if you have a, a PO box uh, somewhere. Uh, and that's how they'd get their feedback, weeks after. Nowadays, one tweet, one uh, SMS is enough to really give you a sense of whether your content is being appreciated or not. So uh, an anchor's job is a lot more than people think. And if you have a big guest, you need to spend hours researching, especially if it's an area that you're particularly not familiar with. I, I, I've previously done research for three to four days for some of the, the guests that I've hosted. And, 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 you know, the audience has given you a chance. You are there for them. They can access those newsmakers. You can make sure you, you represent them as best as you can. Having worked in the media for the last 14 years, I've, I, I'm grateful that I've had the chance to do a few impactful stories, several impactful stories. But the series that comes to mind when I think of the question that you just asked is a series that we did when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the world, hit Kenya, and completely disrupted life as we knew it. Because at that time I was hosting a political show, but we quickly switched in line with exactly what was happening. And we then went on to do a series of health-related programs where we brought on medical experts, doctors, you name it, to come and answer people's questions. 
So we suspended the, the format of, you know, sort of hard-hitting interviews. We opened up the phone lines, we opened up the SMS lines because people were terrified. We were all terrified with, with what was happening. And so for me, um, it was impactful. It was a time when we really just spoke to what was affecting every Kenyan and everyone around the world as well. And the kind of messages we would get after that when people say, thank you, I was, you know, I was terrified before. I had what the doctor said, or I had no idea what to do, or I had a flu for a week and I thought, you know, something is going wrong. I, I, I felt that we, we did the right thing that people needed of us at such an important time like that. And so for me, those, those series of shows, very, very important. They, they forever stand out in my memory as, as a time when we did quality journalism. When, you, when you're working in a political arena as a journalist, obviously, with the kind of interest everyone has in, in politics, um, you know, there are certain things one needs to do to sort of be able to really deliver for our audiences. Uh, one of the things that I would say is I always try to never... So one, it, it cannot be personal. As a journalist, you know, uh, you must do your research. Always make sure that you you really understand what the issues are and all perspectives. Two, I say be fair. No matter how well praised or vilified a person you're interviewing is, um, they are, the, the basics of journalism dictate that you must be fair to them when you call them on your program or if, if they ask to come on and, and speak. So, you know, all the rules that, that regard fairness in terms of the questions you ask, the things you bring up are very, very important. Um, when you're a journalist, also, I think sometimes covering stories that, you know, you've gotten a lot of feedback. There's a lot happening on social media. People are telling you, you must ask this, you must do this. You must also learn to put a lot of sentiments aside and focus on the journalism. So it's not easy. I would say when you look at the best journalists globally, they are praised because they are considered fair, they're considered ethical, they are considered uh, brave and bold in asking the questions others would, would fear to ask. And I think that's what is demanding of uh, anyone who has a platform where they get a chance to ask politicians questions. I want to say I spend a lot of my time and I spent a lot of my time reading on uh, health journalism and, and all that dicti you know, dicti you know, is linked to that and even business journalism as well. And they're very exciting topics. They, they challenge you know, how you think and help you better understand the world that you live in. And you will notice on, on Focus, a lot of themes on health and business. Uh, and it's actually part of what the research shows that young people are interested in. Young people are interested in being healthy, live long, better life, but also interested in, in making money and understanding how money is made. And you'll see a lot of topics like that also on the program.